<clears throat> Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Um, I have, um, I can put them under my superintendent's report, but I'd like to give you a recap about uh, the work of the administrators today, uh, and I have a lot of updates. Uh, so, when it's time. Yeah. Is there anything else that people would like added? I also gave you um, the uh, Vermont Code of Ethics for school board members and yeah. also the roles and responsibility for school board members. And that's something I've done in the past with boards as they form. Uh, just thought maybe we could review them and if you as a board want to sign them that would be good to do that but if some boards don't um, I'm not putting any pressure on anybody uh, so but it doesn't hurt this is a standard standard uh, standard two items that basically most superintendents give their boards especially when they re, uh, reconfigure the board so yeah, it comes right from that VSBA orientation packet, correct? Correct. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, great. So we'll add that to your superintendent's portion of the agenda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else we need to add? Any of the administrators might have something. Uh, we've been pretty locked in the last couple of days, so... Uh, they probably ought to give a report on how we, this was our first day of giving out food and how it went. I know what the count is in Bethel, but I don't know what it is in Royalton, so. Okay. Um, should we just check in and say who's there? I think there's one phone number. I'm not sure who that is specifically, so. Uh, there's two of them now. So this is Lise McCrory, I'm here um, via phone. Great. And then the other one ending in 2-4? Or was that you, Lisa? 5524. Five, five, and how about 9-4? Who's 9-4? The one ending in 9-4. Hello? Nobody's talking. <laughs> they're, they're muted. Whoever is... Uh, muted i don't know who it is though they have to no. press star six to unmute themselves i cannot unmute them thank you. great thank you okay um oh, this is the night. Okay. oh tammy okay good 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 okay Okay, and in general, I think it works well for us to mute ourselves unless we're talking, uh, just because my understanding is that there's a lot of feedback, um, that, like, feedback noise, um, otherwise, so. Um, next on our agenda is to approve the minutes of the, the flurry of meetings that we had recently. Um, the public informational meeting, the annual meeting, and then our special meeting to reorganize on March 5th. Um, sometimes we look at them as a whole group of um, minutes, or we can do them individually, whatever the board's pleasure is. I have a question about the last meeting, Lisa. Okay, go for it. The other meetings I'm okay with, I guess. Okay. But So the last meeting, you had a question, you said? Was that the reorganization meeting? Yeah, the reorganizational meeting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. At that meeting, um, I asked to be put on as one of the three members of the full board. And at least this is my remembrance of it. And that Andrew, I think, decided that he would be an alternate. Okay. And, but I read in the minutes... Um, Um, if three board members attend, we'll identify three voting board members for that meeting. Okay. That's me. And it says I the, the members are considered alternates. And I thought we appointed three. I think Rodney was going to be alternate now. Right. Oh, together. you were going to be on, Andrew? Okay, so. so I thought it was me, Bob, and Andrew. And then, um, and then 
then Rodney, Lisa, and Chris would be the alternate. This is Lisa speaking. Um, since I took the notes, this is where I asked. I wrote to you, Lisa, yeah. for clarification because I wasn't sure exactly who um, was going to be, and and then the feedback that I got back from you was because as we were kind of going in discussion, the idea was that if we're all listed as alternates, then we can determine who's the voting when we show up. Um, if, if there's more than three that are there. Um, but if we need to change the notes to reflect something else, I'm happy with that. But I, I asked for clarification there, and that's what I got. Yeah, I, I don't think that I understood completely what you were asking for, so I apologize right. um, for my role in that, because I I do recollect that, um, that Myself, Bob, and Andrew would be the regular people. Did you get these, Bob? Um, the regular attendees. That's what I was talking about. The remainder yeah, that's that's would be all that. So that effectively, I have them, and I've got a lot of notes on them. So okay. If there were anyone fewer than, I mean, as long as we have three, we can all be voting members. So I apologize for that confusion. Um, any other clarifications about the draft minutes? So should we approve the three that aren't getting amended, or I guess uh, I make a motion to approve the other three minutes as amended and today? the March 5th minutes as amended. Okay. Any seconds? Okay. Any seconds? Okay. Okay. Uh, before we go any further, Lisa, before oh, sorry, yeah. the, the, the rest of this, um, when we get down to... When we get down to the AP and the payroll, is that separate? Jamie, you can come in if you want. No, the AP and the payroll. Are we going to discuss that later? You mean under discussion items, correct? Yeah. yeah. Are we going to do it later? Okay, yeah. Okay. So that's All right. down on the of the warrant. All right. I'm good. All right, thank you. All right, so Andrew made that motion, and I believe it was seconded by Chris. Um, all in favor of approving the minutes of February 18, February 17, March 2nd, as written, um, please say aye. 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 I thought, aye. didn't we agree that we were going to, wasn't part of this, we were going to select three people or not? We, so we did say that you, Andrew, and I would be the people who go to the full board on a regular basis and all other members are the alternate. That's right. I'm okay with that. And we're right. going to amend the March 5th minutes to reflect that. And so Correct. that's what we would approve for the March 5th minutes as amended in that way. So it's right. Okay. So I heard three eyes. Um, Bob, yeah. are you? I'm okay. okay. Yeah. All right, great. So those are unanimously approved. And that brings us to board comment. Do we have any board comment? Um, I have something to add. I just wanted to express a lot of gratitude for all the work that people have done getting packets of work in the hands of students, getting meals um, in the hands of families as early as today. Um, it, this is a really hard time. I think that people rely on school for so much nowadays, and I just am really proud of the efforts that have taken place in our communities and at the supervisory union to make this as smooth as possible. I know that there there will be hiccups. We've never done anything like this before in my lifetime, for sure. Um, but for right now, I'm just really proud of the efforts taking place, and I just wanted to say thank you. Lisa, I'd like to uh, I'd like to thank uh, the superintendent because I think he's done a I think he's done a really great job in a situation where nobody knows what to do. Really, he's provided some really good leadership, and I really appreciate it. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate that. Anyone else? Okay. Um, 
So that brings us to reports to the board. Okay, I've got a little bit of a um, lot to say, actually. Um, so uh, we have been met and we've been, been meeting for the last two days. Uh, we've had a real, real healthy agenda, and we've taken minutes uh, on everything we've done um, to try to get going. Um, I'm trying to keep everybody working together and not having anybody get a ha out ahead of any group. And there's a lot of, you know, the, the principals are all leaders and they're all A-type personalities and and they, you know, they want to get this done and, and get it done well and get it done as quickly as possible. But I've, we've tried to bridle them a little bit and I, that's not a good word, but uh, <laughs> to try to keep them moving together in groups and uh, so that we can all work together and, and accomplish this. Um, so I'm going to speak to different areas. Um, we have now begun a, um, a resource list um, for uh, the teachers and for the community. Um, uh, I wanted, uh, as we began this, to start um, to ask expectations so that we all had a common understanding of exactly what we mean when we talk about contact with students, what that looks like, how much it's going to be done. And uh, we have settled, some of you were on this call last night, and if I'm redundant, pardon me for that, but I know all of you weren't. But um, So we are, um, we did uh, have a common understanding, a common agreement that the teachers would contact every student three times a week. And uh, we don't, we don't know how long that's going to be, but, but we want to make sure either by computer, uh, online, or by phone, um, we are going to be providing a thing called Google Voice to people so they don't have to use their own personal cell phone. And we are going to make sure that that's available uh, for students to be able to contact their, their teachers. Ray's got a point. Maybe I'm not, maybe we're not. That, I don't know. That was the plan. It's now a paid product. We're reevaluating. Okay, so we're going to try to make that happen. I don't want, I, we are going to allow the teachers to access the building, but we're not going to allow them to come in in force. We're going to stagger them so they can come at different times and we won't have these big groups of people uh, to be able to do that. So, uh, and the teacher or the uh, principals are now coming up with some kind of a plan so that um, they come in at different days and not to have uh, a lot of people in the building at one time. Uh, so three days a week, it can be more than that if, if teachers are comfortable. Uh, what I've heard through the principals is there's an awful lot of expression of caring for the kids. They, they're worried about them, um, the, the teachers are. And they really, really, really want to get back to seeing them, talking to them, communicating with them. Uh, and these uh, three times a week will be one-on-one. -on -one. It won't be in groups. So uh, we'll use Google Hangout when we can um, and uh, try to make sh sure that that happens. And there will be a contact log established, uh, making sure that we get special ed services where they need to be. Uh, and that will be maintained uh, so that there is record of the contact that happens between two teachers and students. Um, we have a curriculum committee and there's expectations that the faculty will do planning, uh, check, with, check with students. Uh, we've been emphasizing relationships, 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 making sure that we have uh, folks making contact, uh, nurses, counselors, librarians, and support staff, special ed. Uh, we talked about that today, and uh, the, the principals are going to make sure that those people uh, are involved in things. I know there's going to be a, a, a um, MTSSB uh, group along with the counselors tomorrow. Uh, there's also going to be a nurses uh, committee meeting virtual committee meeting that will be taking place. Bill Ketter, Dr. Ketter has been on all these calls. Uh, he's got a lot of resources for families about how do you talk to your kids about the coronavirus and things like that. Uh, 
So he's been a real asset. And he's also very worried about the kids in the responsive classroom uh, and making sure that they're taken care of. Uh, and uh, so he's, he's been on there because he's uh, really, really involved with the kids that they serve in the restorative program. Uh, so um, we have uh, had a meeting with the, um, uh, Owen was in charge of this. He, uh, he worked with all the custodians in the whole SU this morning. Uh, this thing about uh, deep cleaning, uh, understanding what that is, making sure all of them are doing that. And we had a CDC, um, uh, I don't know, standard uh, handout to them about what that entails. Uh, I think it's the, the equivalent of summer cleaning, at least that's the way we're taking it with the idea that we're scrubbing down walls and uh, in some cases ceilings uh, to make sure that everything is real clean. Um, we have a special ed, Deb, S Deb Matthews is working on that. Um, food service started today curbside in each of the buildings in, each, in the whole SU. I know, uh, like I said, we had uh, 79, I think, in, in Bethel, uh, 73 in, they had uh, 45 in the first uh, uh, half hour or so. Uh, so people, people came by, they were instructed not to get out of their cars, that we would bring the lunches to them, and, uh, and then away they went. Um, do we have a total on what happened in uh, Royalton? Anybody, David or Reed, do you know how many lunches were served? Uh, I do not. I do not think we have an account. No, David, I do not have an account from Willie, but um, it was a brisk business. Okay. All right. Um, we also uh, there's been some meeting going on with counselors and support staff, uh, and we're tonight. I'm going to write a letter to the to the teachers that basically tells them what we expect of them. Um, we're thinking a five hour day, uh, working with students, you know, online or whatever. Um, and uh, I'm gonna to talk to them about the expectations of three days a week, uh, contact with every student they serve. Um, we're a little concerned because we know that not everyone has connectivity. Uh, we did talk today uh, about computers and how many, and wherever there were computers at school for student use, we're going to try to get them out to the kids to use. Um, so, you know, that's something, a lot of them, some of them took them home uh, on Friday. Um, and uh, we're going to make sure that all of the Chromebooks and other uh, devices that we use right now that are in the schools get out to the kids. Uh, we will make sure that they sign uh, agreements uh, treating them well, but uh, we want to make sure that those things uh, are out there with them. And uh, let me see what else. Uh, I'm sorry. Are you gonna Are you gonna try to buy some to get to other kids? Um, maybe have a connection, but don't have a computer. To... We have not talked about it. That doesn't mean we won't. Um, one thing else with the custodians I want to mention, we've just, we talked, Owen talked to them about cleaning the buses and that's how it's going to be done. They're going to clean the buses. So, um, when, after we make runs, um, Tara, you heard Tara at the beginning of this meeting talk about, um, the red light thing. Well, the red light thing is, um, a letter that came from the, um, Department of Education, uh, Agency for Education today, that basically said when the buses don't have kids on them, they're not school buses any longer. They're transportation like trip buses. And we can't use the flashing red lights in order to stop. So uh, we're going to still use them, but they're going to have to pull over and we have to take some care that kids don't come running out and, uh, and put those kids in harm's way. So that's just another little wrinkle. We, we think it may change. I don't know. Uh, but I did talk to the Butler bus this afternoon and they are, uh, they, they've said 
in the last two days, they're ready to go. They have, we have all the buses at our disposal and uh, we intend uh, to begin to use them to shuttle work to kids. Uh, a lot of the, in a lot of the cases, the, the parents have been in to pick up the work. Um, in, in a case of if some of, uh, of the schools, they put it in a room and let the parents just come in and take it. It's all marked and with the kids' names on it. Uh, so we're going to use the buses to get out uh, materials, and we're also going to collect those materials. The idea is um, one run a day, um, and that run will also take food uh, starting on Monday. Uh, that's when it'll begin. Uh, tomorrow, um, two of the districts are going to start shuttling materials tomorrow on buses. That's Rochester and Stockbridge. The rest of the uh, the rest of the districts um, are trying to do it by having the parents come in, but we know we're not going to hit everybody, so that it'll start for everybody um, SU wide on Monday. Um, um, what else uh, today? We formed a, um, uh, we're going to be meeting with Wendy Walsh the, uh, from the uh, health department tomorrow at 1015. We have a standing meeting at 10 o'clock and it just kind of goes till it's done uh, with a lot of different issues that we try to cover. Um, one thing, um, well two things actually. I. Um, we got a call from Gifford uh, today, and they would like us to set up childcare for um, healthcare workers that uh, have to report to work. And uh, so we've, we're trying to wrap our head around that. We've had two, two of the districts volunteer to be host sites, uh, Bethel and, Sh and Sharon. Um, we think, uh, and we've also had some people that have kind of raised their hands to uh, man those sites uh, with kids. We're gonna. I, I. We don't have any idea how much, how many people are gonna want to do this. And of course, there's some risk, and we're concerned about that. But um, we're still working on that. Uh, we thought that if we can get everything organized, that might start on Monday. Uh, I'm gonna have another call uh, with uh, Gifford folks, and I think we're probably gonna have to do. It one, maybe the Sharon one for those uh, professionals that are going south to Hitchcock. And, uh, yeah. And, and yeah, Alice Peck Day as well. Um, but again, I, we didn't get this call until this afternoon, and we've got a lot of work to do. And I know that Randolph has set up one uh, that's going to happen pretty soon. We've seen the, the particulars about what, how they're going to do at the times and, and uh, all that. Uh, so we are going to kind of model some of that. It, it has to be a plan that allows them to get to work and their work hours are from 7 in the morning till 3, which means we have to have it open before that and after that. Like six uh, to four. So we've got a lot of, we've got a lot of labor out there that, and there's a lot of willing people, but we don't also know how bad this this is going to get, um, and so that's an issue. Um, we may we may have a, may have a lot of kids <laughs> if we do this. Um, so that's still something in progress. I wanted to tell you about it. <clears throat> also, um, this is the idea that kept me up last night. Actually, uh, it's kind of exciting, I think, or or something that's Oh, we talked about uh, report cards, uh, child care, uh, literacy work, nurses, uh, all kinds of things. Uh, what else? Uh, professional development. Some of the teachers need some training on doing professional development over um, virtually, and uh, we're going to, we've paired with. Uh, Castleton, they're going to provide some professional development around accessing uh, courses. Can you talk to that, Ray, to the board? Or so uh, VTVLC, Jeff Renard from uh, VTVLC, which is an online education provider in the state, 
which uh, Bethel and Royalton are using in the high school. There's one teacher who is uh, providing a class. The, Jeff the, Bernard, the person who runs that program, is going to has offered a course to the SU teachers about how to teach online. Right, that's what we're talking about. Yep, yep. Um, Dr. Ketterer has a lot of resources, and he, we're ready to send them to families uh, about this uh, virus and uh, about sensitivity and trauma sensitivity and things like that. So he's been a great asset uh, throughout all of this. The last thing is the idea that I was telling you that's kept me up at night. And you're kind of my first sounding board to find out whether this has got any, well, actually the principles were, but... Uh, whether this has got any value. Uh, last night when we were briefing the board, uh, one of the board members from Stratford made the comment, um, can you uh, use the buses to take food to the elderly? And I think she was talking about uh, Stratford, which I think only has about three people that might need it. But it's a growing issue around the SU. and. Um, so I, I was, I went home thinking about that and, um, and really kind of got up early this morning thinking about that. And I, I think because of the resources we have in the transportation, um, it may be timely to start to do kind of a, a town forum type thing with, uh, select board members some of the legislative leaders, um, board members, uh, to talk about the things we need throughout this SU com community, um, kind of together online and, and asking questions. I know I got a lot of questions last night that I really valued and it changed the way I was thinking about things. Uh, but I'm thinking if we could do kind of a town hall forum, knowing that we have these resources to be able to do it, it may be good uh, in trying to bring all of our resources to bear to try to help people because we're all under the impression that this is going to get worse, not better, uh, before, it gets wor uh, before it gets better. Um, the idea, you know, of doing meals for, for the elderly in all of the districts is important, I think, not just in one town that's asked for it. Um, and I wonder, because we have the resources of transportation, um, how we might use that uh, while we go about our, you know, our, our daily work and getting food to kids and work to kids and collecting work from kids. Um, you know, I think maybe if we did it on a weekly basis or every couple days for a while, I mean, not to say that people don't have cars, but... Uh, you know, I, I, the attendance on the, on the meeting last night was way over the top, more than I expected. It was 32 people on the, on the call. And what that says to me, people want to know what's going on. <laughs> you know, they're craving information. And I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of ways of getting it out, but uh, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I think it's a good idea. I yeah, I think if we have the capacity, it's a good idea. Um, the only question in my mind at this point in time is you reference work coming back. Um, and I'm just curious about how that work will be handled because at this point in time, to my knowledge, we don't know exactly how long um, this virus lives on surfaces. Some people are saying 24 to 48 hours. Some people are suggesting longer. Um, so just in terms of protecting people handling materials. Uh. Yeah, the answer, Lisa, is that we haven't discussed that. Okay. The sensitivity, I mean, I guess maybe the people that can be distributing it and collecting it can wear gloves, <laughs> for one yeah. thing. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I guess that's something we ought to talk about. Um, yeah. We talked about... Uh, the custodians using foggers today. Do you you familiar with what foggers do? Well, I mean, we're going to try to get some of those, uh, which is a way of kind of a mass cleansing of everything. Um, 
I wasn't familiar with those, but that's something that we talked about today because uh, the principals knew about it. Um, so, you know, there's that. Uh, uh, I think we're going to have to be careful, and I, and, and I think we're going to have to get some latex gloves and give them to those people that are on buses and being, being uh, thoughtful about that. Uh, you bring up a good point. Um, one thing you could do with returning work is just scan it all in. Like have one person who handles it and scan it in and then distribute it digitally. Then it's just one point of contact on the actual, you know, returning work. Yep. So yep. Bruce, are you going to start this? You're going to, you're going to, you're thinking about it. So are, are you going to, you're going to start it by talking to your legislature select men and well we're going to have to get some I, we have a communication committee okay that that's that's whose hands i'm going to put it in how do we get this disseminated out to them so that they will call in and we can start to provide you know a place that they can talk so uh, my, my question is are you going to start by including all these people pulling them together and trying to create a I think it's a good idea. Well, I don't know whether I don't, I don't know whether they need that, but I, I what I, I saw that, last night was a lot of need for information. That's you know? a real. I mean, I think that's a real positive approach to, and you get communities to stand behind you, and that's a really good thing. So. Well, I know Royalton acts like Royalton, Bethel acts like, but we don't have any common thread that holds this SU together. You know, I mean, and I would, I would think that we can learn from each other you know, about what's going on. What do you think, you guys, uh, out there? I, Bob's weighed in, but what about the rest of you? Yeah, I think if we publicize that we have the buses and we're willing to entertain ways for them to be used, I'm sure people will come up with ideas and contact them. I think it's a good idea. You know, as long as we have standards for, you know, what they need to abide by as far as safety and all that. Others? Uh, this is Lisa. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, this is Chris. Uh, is how's it, is it, the bus driver going to be the one distributing it, or is there no. you know, like a person or people riding along with the bus driver? No, we we are. Uh, that's one of the things that that. Uh, Butler wants to make sure a lot of their drivers uh, just not able to do that and uh, so we're going to provide somebody on the bus with them maybe one person maybe two people I don't know how that's going to go that the we're going to start like I said in the two towns tomorrow in Stockbridge and Rochester because they wanted to get get on with it uh, but the rest of the towns will start on on Monday um, but we will be providing paraprofessionals or or others um, who want to do this I think the teachers want to get into this you know i mean many of them are you know want to get going and uh and help you know somebody else so i think it's a great idea oh. if we have capacity to do it well it's more about the sharing of ideas knowing that we have the buses but the sharing of ideas is more important i think than just the fact that we have the buses, you know, I, I don't know. So, uh, Owen here. Uh, thank you all for meeting. And welcome Bob as a new board member. Thank you. And what a time we're living in. And <clears throat> some folks have heard me say this, but I still truly believe this, that we should take care of ourselves first so that we can be good leaders to others and model what leadership is. <clears throat> I would tell you that um, I met with the custodians and I raised my hand as a school leader to, to work with them and they're awesome and they have a plan to keep our schools clean and ready to reopen but also to be cleaned and disinfected. And we met and we reviewed the CDC school cleaning and disinfection uh, protocols, and they're doing all of that. So that's wonderful. I'm really, um, 
I would agree with you, Bob, on the fact that Bruce has been <coughs> offering great leadership, and and he's in a transition mode, but at the same time, it doesn't even seem it. He's just the leader we expect him to be. And I'll stop there for now. But thank you, Bruce, and thank you to the board for all your support. Thank you, Owen. Um, so um, the other thing on my report, um, I don't know whether anybody has any comments. I went through a whole kinds of all kinds of things. Um, you know, anything on food service, anything on our committees, anything that I've left out. Uh, I do have a question. So the three times a week contact. Um, how? What about special teachers? So like music and art and. Spanish. Right up there. Uh, yeah, uh, that's a good question, Andrew. We haven't gotten to that yet. It's uh, first on our agenda for tomorrow, um, but it's and it's up here on the board to to deal with nurses, counselors, art, music, PE, librarians, special ed, OT, PT, etc. Also, uh, student support services and MTSS coordinator. Um, okay. You know, they're all things, they're all people that we haven't talked about deeply about yet. Okay. So, and we're, we're on for doing that tomorrow. Sure. Anybody else want to comment? You were all, uh, the uh, principals are all on the call, so. I can't remember if you mentioned it uh, for the potential of offering daycare or whatever for, for people at hospitals. Is there funding available for that or, or are we going to be doing that or are we thinking about doing that pro bono or, or what's the, the status on that? Um, yeah, I, I, we have, I've got another call with uh, uh, her last name's Harris from, uh, from Gifford tomorrow after we meet as a administrative team. There's a committee working on this and uh, we also have the feedback from what Randolph did uh, so that we can make sure that we try to duplicate it. I don't believe they were charging for it. Uh, there were lunches provided. Uh, the time was 6.45 to, um, I think, 3.30 or something like that. Um, you know, I, I don't, I think we're going to have to have not just one size fits all. I think we're going to have to have a couple different age classrooms, uh, you know, doing this. So it's, it's more than one classroom, you know, so, um, but that's only that, that discussion is only about four hours old. So I, I really, the committee's going to come back with some things. They met, um, after we finished our administrators meeting for about a half an hour to discuss things. And there are, uh, five people on that committee. So, Bruce, are we, are we going to get uh, an analytical cost? I mean, we're, all these ideas are good. I like them all. I'm in favor of them all. But well, it is going to cost some money, and we ought to have we ought to have that laid out for us so we understand what it is. Well, we have we have contracts with all these groups: the teachers, the support staff, the bus company. Um, one one planet folks uh, maybe may, maybe we don't I'm not sure about the contracts with them but I would could ask Carrie about That's, it. She's researching that. And we um, we're gonna have to pay them, you know. But you know there there's so many things that are that we're not doing now, field trips and ordering materials and, and you know, know but, all those things, you know. Yeah, but I think just put the. You know, somebody can put together an analytical cost. Well, it's yeah. going to be a guess. You know, it's not going to, but at least we're going to have an idea. And you're going to be able to say it's all within the budget, hopefully, you know. Absolutely. Well, absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, salaries are already budgeted. Why don't you talk to food this? Because I know you, this is on your mind. Food service, <laughs> the meals that are being provided, we're utilizing the summer food program because our schools are closed. So that is fully that's reimbursable. Okay with the, state. the state, that's what the state has told us to do. Secretary French issued an order in support of the governor's order that we're required to pay all contracted salaries. So as we all discussed, we should utilize them because we have to pay them regardless. So that's already been budgeted for. And the transportation contract was already budgeted for. 
So I had all... a call from Butler today Within... asking whether we were going to fulfill the contract. I said, yeah, we have a contract. Yeah. Uh, don't worry. You know, we'll pay your drivers. We'll, or we'll pay you to pay your drivers. Right. And so. so, yeah. But I think it's like anything. You, you look at it, you put it on a piece of paper, mm -hmm. and, and then you add and subtract, multiply and divide, whatever you do, and mm -hmm. you come up with, all right, this is what we have, and this is what our costs are going to be, or we think they're going to be. You think we can do something like that for, you know, in, in the next couple of weeks, maybe? Probably. I think maybe it's it's things that we didn't anticipate that mm -hmm. are going to bite us, you know, uh, more than anything else. Uh, and, you know, because we're in such an unusual time. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's noted, and we'll try to do something with it. Uh, others? For, for anyone doing that, will they be given the option to to fill those roles or because uh, you know this uh, we can't order them no right. <laughs> you know I I'm very sen some of them are very sensitive about this and and some of them are concerned about carrying anything back to their families uh, which is you know a concern but uh, when I was over at Bethel today you know when the teacher Holly Williams was out in the parking lot delivering meals I mean she and I said to her I said thanks for doing this and she said I need to do something, <laughs> you know, I just need to be busy, and uh, they, you know, you know, I, they will step up, I know. Um, most of what I want from the teachers, though, is communication with the kids, uh, so, and we are going to allow them to come back to the buildings and, and access telephones there if they need to, so it doesn't have to be on their own personal phone or anything else. So, so Lisa, um, other than the uh, code of ethics, if you want to talk about that or the roles of the board, uh, maybe the board wants to discuss this. This isn't the first time I've given this out. I've given your board, this board, I think a year ago, this same paperwork. So um, it'd be great if you guys w were good to sign it, but um, I can't compel you to do that. So. Uh, before we jump into the Code of Ethics and the other element, I wanted to weigh in on all of that discussion on all of those things you identified, Bruce. Um, this is Tammy, yeah. um, just a community member. And so um, this spreads fast, um, and students can be carriers, though they are not showing symptoms. Um, and so as we, as we think about moving forward, we need to kind of follow in the shoes of Italy and mitigating any groups larger than a certain size, potentially 10, whether it be a child group age, you know, K through 5 or a child group age 6 through 12. Um, and mitigating that so that we can isolate that is very, very vital. And I, I think that Gifford is definitely aware of that. Um, I'm confident that Gifford has a sense as to um, funding resources that might be available by a grant or state funding in such a state of an emergency. Um, and there might be funding that we can learn from to address um, Bob's um, concerns or Chris's concerns or all of our concerns as a result of the judiciary responsibility to the community. Um, maybe there's lessons we can learn from other schools in our area on how they've afforded some of these options. Thank you. Anybody want to weigh in on what Tammy just said? I think she's right. Yeah, I, I agree with what Tammy just said. I think those are important things to be thoughtful of as we proceed. I think, I think looking to Italy, we can learn, because Italy is about 10 days ahead of um, the United States. But I did not pay attention to the school system in Italy at this moment in time. But. I think that that would allow us some predictability as to, so if you have, if you have um, friendships with educators in Italy, what can we learn from them to help our communities, but not only our communities, but our students? <clears throat> Lisa, yeah. uh, you want to talk about uh, oh, these the, other things or not? Remember code of ethics. Um, yeah, I think I don't have my copy right in front of me. 
I have a different PDF um, that I got earlier today. Um, but it's something that we look at, we try to look at annually. Um, and it's in the orientation book from the Vermont School Boards Association. Um, so I think in general, it's just sort of the best practice um, behind our work. So um, I'm trying to look for it online, but I don't, I don't know if this group wants to take that up right now or if we want to each take a copy, read it, and then discuss it in more detail at our next meeting. Lisa, I've been through it and I've write a lot of comments. What I've got to say is going to take a while. Okay. So you might you might not you might not want to do it right now. Is what I'm saying. Well, I think if you have. I'll just soon. I, I don't have a problem with that. But in your mind right now, uh, I'm okay with with going for it right now. I mean, you're the the newest member of the group, and so I think that um, I just didn't want to catch you off guard with it. So I feel like if you're prepared, um, Oh, I'm ready. Sure. Let's go for it. Okay. Lisa, it's in an email from Christy at like one o'clock earlier today too, if you're looking okay, for it. Right, thank you. I'm sorry. I haven't had a chance to thoroughly go through everything. Okay. Um, so Bob, do you have something you'd like to share? Well, I, can leave the discussion if you want it's fine i don't mind do you want uh, me to do that well i mean i've got i've got a whole lot of okay we'll a whole lot of that. questions and a whole a whole lot of thought behind this okay. and, it's, and at this point in time i wouldn't i wouldn't sign it at this point in time okay okay i don't know how the other board members feel if they've read it yet or not but should we just go around? So Bob said he would not sign. Um, Andrew? Have you all looked at it? <laughs> we, we've looked at it in previous years, and I think we were okay with it in previous years, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, Bob, I think you should just go over what your issues are with it. Are. Okay. You can do that now. <clears throat> so, Lisa, are you okay with it? Just checking in with everybody. Or Chris, uh, okay. In the past, I think we've signed it. Nobody's weighing in right this minute. Um, but Bob, similar to what um, Andrew said, if you want to share what you find um, that you disagree with, that would be a, now is as good as well. I I don't know as I would disagree, but I I've been in a situation like this. Okay. Um, I've been a, I've been in a situation like this as a principal, and uh, where where there was a uh, where there was a complaint filed against a board member. Okay. Okay. And actually, um, I was involved in filing the complaint, and. When it came to a vote before the board, it was uh, denied. That was my experience, okay? And it was really serious, really serious. Um, well, let me just go through a couple of things here. Okay. So, have the board members signed this? Have board members already signed this? No, not this year. Okay. I mean, in they, have year. they done it in the past? I believe so. That's what Andrew, I don't, I don't. I, don't, I haven't kept it. I guess we, it was more or yeah. less. I don't uh, remember if we actually signed it, or I know we looked at it and discussed it in previous years and basically agreed to it. But okay. I don't remember if we actually physically signed it. And okay, it. all right. We so in my experience, my experience, who decides that there's a violation of this code of ethics? I, I think that it's more about us sort of committing to each other that we're going to behave in this way. That may be, but if there's a violation, if there's a violation here, and in my case it was very serious, okay, very okay. serious. So um, if there's a violation here, is it is it the responsibility of the superintendent to uh, 
work with the board or, or file the complaint with the board? How's, how is that? It's, um, it's not talked about here. As the, but As the chair in the past, if there's a complaint, I have worked with the superintendent um, and of course been in close communication with Andrew as a vice chair so that we're um, so that we're on top of the situation and um, I just realized my laptop's about to die. Sorry. I was going to say you just you just went right out of the picture. <laughs> yep. So um, so in the past, if there's a complaint, it comes to me and I work on it with the superintendent um, and bring it to the full board as necessary. Okay, well that should all be written down in here. If that's the process that you're going to use. Okay. The process okay. that I was involved with, all the, all the work was done by the superintendent, presented it to the board, and then the board voted. And the process, yeah. the, the process that I was involved with. Okay. Because it's going to take some kind of a board, somebody's going to have to say, you know, that this isn't all right and you violated the ethics agreement. And if you're a board member and you're involved with the investigation or talking about it, you, you're not going to be able to make that judgment. But the board's going to have to make that judgment. Right. So my sense is it belongs to the superintendent and he needs to, and he would need to bring it before the board so, for the recommendation. So, In your board handbook is the process for addressing board member misconduct. What is that? Page 77. I think. Can you read that since you have it right at your fingertips? You want me to read that whole page? <laughs> it says, okay. it will be considered misconduct for a member of the board of directors to fail to adhere to the expectations agreed to by the board or to engage in conduct that is otherwise injurious to the district. The board chair, or if the situation involves the board chair, Another board member shall document and give written notice of the alleged misconduct to the board member. Such written notice may be subject to a public records request and should be limited to a description of the alleged conduct and the specific expectation that was violated by the conduct. After three documented instances of alleged misconduct or one instance of serious misconduct that directly harms the district, the board chair, or if applicable, the executive committee of the SUSD board will meet to review the conduct of the board member. The person who is the subject of the misconduct allegations will be given a chance to view the documentation of alleged misconduct and to meet with the board chair executive committee to respond to the allegations. Discussions of board members' performance is a permissible subject for discussion in executive session under Vermont's open meeting law. However, any action taken to censor or issue a formal request for resignation must occur in public session. After meeting with the subject of the alleged misconduct, the board chair or executive committee, if applicable, may recommend one or more of the following actions to the full board of directors for its action. Board level discussion of misconduct, including a possible vote of censure against the person in question, communication of the misconduct to the community represented by the board member, a formal request for that person's resignation from the board of directors. Before taking any of the above actions, a board should also consult with its attorney to ensure the wording of any proposed motion does not create legal issues for the district. Thank you so much, Tara. You're welcome. I didn't realize it was such a long page. <laughs> That's really clearly outlined for us. And it doesn't include the superintendent at all. No. <laughs> Not at all. No. Um, what do you well, think about Well, my, my sense is what, you know, what the board votes on and agrees to. But you've got to have something in there that tells how you're going to handle uh, a complaint, okay? There's nothing here in this page that talks about that. Well, so it may be in there. It outlines the ethics uh, that we're going to follow, and then the board handbook then outlines the... Right, and you, uh, as, yeah, and as a board, you... Because so, it's more of an operations manual thing rather than adhering to...
to your code of ethics. Yeah. So there's but, usually two separate documents. Mm -hmm. But you'd still have to say that's what you're going to do. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying not to do it. I'm just saying that's what you have to. You have to have something in there that says how you're going to. How are you going to handle it? You're looking for like a sentence that says violations of this. This document can be addressed by this process. Like yeah. That, yeah, that yeah that however, like to the other yeah, however you would do it, I would still vote. I would still vote for the superintendent, only because I've been through the process and I've seen how it works. Um, I think it would. I think it, the way it's outlined, I would stay with that because the superintendent isn't our supervisor, and so usually it goes to the person that has the highest rank, and the superintendent doesn't have any rank over the school board members. Well, in my opinion, you'd certainly be able to vote on it. You know, as a board, you'd be able to vote to do what you want to do. Um, so, so what I'm hearing is um, that. If the board so chose, we could make a motion to agree to that, agree to adhere to this code of ethics. I mean, we're not all together to physically sign it at this moment. Uh, well, I have some other, I have some other questions. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, under the first uh, act within the scope of official role. Recognize the responsibility to see the schools are well run, but not run by them, meaning one of the board members. Yep. Okay. So, the board... Let me get this right. I made a note to myself. Um, so, at board meetings... Um, it's really important that the board takes votes and not deal with general opinions. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. Okay. So like Robert's rules of order, somebody makes a motion, second the motion, then we have discussion, and then we vote. Right. Yeah. Not just say that it's the general opinion of the board. You know. Right. Well, I think that there are times um, to make motions and and to make sort of those binding rules, but then there are times um, where we're just asked for feedback, and we don't vote necessarily on everything. Um, so, for an example of that would be when we discuss how to promote our schools to try to attract. Um, students from choice communities. And Reed is looking for feedback and then the board can give their opinion as opposed to a process where we need to really agree and formally go through that process. Um, if that makes sense. Well, if it's a responsibility of the board to see that the schools are well run, then Part of that responsibility is to take some kind of motion or action to make sure they are well run. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let me go on. I think any you know if there's a subject of disagreement or something, you can put forward a motion, or you know any board member can do that. Right. So, right. Yeah. Um, you know, if we all kind of are agreeing, we don't necessarily need to have a vote on it unless somebody feels that a vote is necessary. I respect your opinion, Andrew. Um, only as a member of the board and not to assume in the, any individual authority when the board is not in session, otherwise directed by the board. So, so I think that one identifies the fact that we don't operate um, as individuals. Like, my will as one individual um, is not something that I can present as the will of the board. So okay. I can't um, interact with Owen, for example, just because the school's 
right up the street from where I live um, and act as if I wield the authority of the full board because I'm only one-sixth of the board. Um, and so when the board isn't in session, um, I don't assume individual authority. So that, that goes back to what I've told you guys before, that you have no authority as individuals. You only right. have authority as working together. Right. And, that's and we make decisions together that um, we have a responsibility to act towards that collective decision's end. Um, so, for example, there are times when we might agree that we're going to sign a specific contract. And I might be, as the chair, the person who has to sign that contract. But I have the authorization of the whole board before that happens. I understand all that. Yep. Okay. Um, so if you're at a board meeting, supervisor and union board meeting, and you're appointed to represent us, but something comes up that you're not sure how the board feels about, but you like it. Are you going to vote? You're going to vote yes, and that's going to be okay. I think that we have a responsibility to report back to our board um, what we hear at the full board. We've sort of been spoiled for the last little while. We've all been making the full board meetings, so that makes it really easy. To know what people are thinking and we we have had consensus um, for quite some time on a number of issues so there have been times when we have had to say at the full board um, that we don't feel comfortable uh, making uh, an agreement at that time and that we really just need to bring the information back to our board and then come back to the full board in order to make a decision okay I want you to, I just okay. want you I want you to people just are, like board members are that's a separate board which has separate authority so they are as individuals of that board able to make judgment calls and all that by themselves but you know in general I think the general practice is that we should try and get the agreement of our board before we do something well I think that's statement but it's not necessarily legally necessary you know I, 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 yeah us, I agree with us telling the principal what to do as, as an individual is not legally what we're allowed to do. We can only tell the principals what to do as board, or I guess the superintendent tells I'll get to that, Andrew. Um, give no directives as an individual board member to any school administrator or employee publicly or privately. I understand that. Okay? Give no directive. But does that mean that you can't have a conversation? You can't express an idea. You can't express an opinion. Does that mean that? I, I think there is a very fine line um, there. And I think that framing is really important. So you can have conversations. Um, but at the same time, it needs to be really super clear that just because you're a board member doesn't mean that your idea should hold more weight than any other member of the community, um, exclusive of your time with the board and the board making a decision. Um, so you can share an idea and they can choose to, to do what they want with it, is my, my interpretation of that. Yeah, and I think similarly, like, you know, I post on Facebook sometimes about school board stuff, and I try and be clear when it's me as an individual talking versus the board having put out a release or something like that, or something that we voted on at the board, you know, try and separate what my individual opinion is versus the board collective opinion. You know? But you do have an individual opinion sometimes, Andrew. Right. And okay. I'll, when I, I try and be as clear as I can to say, you know, as an individual, this is what I think, you know. Okay. okay. Um, all right. I, let me go ahead here. Uh, avoid making uh, commitments that may compromise the decision-making ability of the board or administrators. Mm -hmm. Now that says commitments, okay? But it doesn't say opinions. 
such commitments. So no board member can make a commitment. You can't do that because you're, it takes, it'll take on this board, it takes a majority to make a commitment. One person can't make a commitment, but one, per, one person can have an opinion. Brad. Um, I don't think I have any problems with the middle. I think I'm okay with all that. Um, respect my peers, my constituents, and confidentiality considerations. Now, I have no problem with the confidentiality piece. I think that's right. Uh, voice opinions respectfully and treat with respect other board members, administrators, school staff, and members of the public. I agree with all that. What if you're discussing something with an administrator or a board member and they walk away and not listen to you? Who's disrespectful in that situation? I would need more information. There you go. That's right. You would need more information. Maintain a confidentiality and information discussion executive session. I agree with all that. Um, there's nothing, there's nothing in here about what a board member would expect from an administrator. I have a problem with that. This is all about board members. There's another, there's another, there's another, there's another, there's another, there's another part to this, and that is honesty and openness about, uh, uh, by administrators with board members answering your questions. That's really important. A board member you need because you represent the community you need to be able to walk up to an administrator ask a question and expect some kind of an answer and if you don't get the answer the administrator can say i don't know now that's fine but you need to be able to do that you need to be able to have conversations your community the, the, the sort of piece that um is important there is that we act as a board. So we can come forward to administrators in this setting um, and ask questions and expect answers. Um, I don't think it's necessarily best practice for board members um, to one-to-one -to -one be having those conversations. Number one, That's I think that there's a transparency piece on both the part of administrators and board members um, that I think needs to be followed. Um, there's a chain of command that needs to be followed. And I think that what I don't like as a board member, um, and I don't think our administrators like, is feeling blindsided by any sort of question, et cetera. I think there is a responsibility um, and that we enjoy the fact that our administrators have almost 100% attendance at these meetings. So we have a forum to have those conversations. Bruce, do they, do you, you as the superintendent and do the principals as principals have a code of ethics that you are expected to adhere to. I mean, because I mean, that's part of it, though, for me at least, is that this document is the code of ethics for school board members. It's not the code of ethics for principals or superintendents. But I would assume that there's a separate code of ethics for you all, uh, and that that would go into you know any decisions that the board makes about your performance. Yeah, it has. It has. Somebody jumping in. We have licenses and. And we have uh, responsibilities through those li the licensure. There's a person at the AOE that basically uh, looks at all complaints, and uh, and and because we have those licenses, uh, can take them away. <laughs> so, if we, you know, the ethical standards that that are written for superintendents and for principals. So. Um, I can't pull them up right this second, but I can certainly get copies of them. And 
I mean, if, if somebody has an issue with, like, we're the boss of the superintendent, and the superintendent's in charge of the principal, so if a board member has an issue with the way an administrator is behaving, they can bring it up, you know, in presumably in an executive session with the rest of the board, and then if it's deemed by the board to be something that needs to be addressed, then then the board as a whole could take take actions. But sounds you know, sounds great, Andrew. It's not written in here, but that's I agree with you totally. But that's not again. It's not. This isn't addressing that part of it. Like that's that's just how the board operates. So it's not like what we're expected to do. It's what we like. It's it's in a completely separate Click on thing. Chat, this, will you please? This, document isn't, a t isn't an attempt to address every single aspect of being on the board. It's just what we're expected to provide. So this is the uh, code of uh, the standard for educators. Do uh, you have that? Okay, he's going to pull it up. Right. This is the standards for uh, leadership standards for uh, Vermont, and uh, you can all see that. Um, thanks, Andra, for producing that quickly. Um, could we just have that forwarded to our email so we can look at it another time? I don't mm -hmm. know if we need to read through the whole thing now. Yeah, I don't mean to. I I didn't want to miss the moment that you were asking sure. about. That's a good that. idea. That's a good idea. Uh, Ray's doing that right now. Great. Thank you. Yep. Uh, how long is the document? 51 pages. 51 pages. Oh, wow. Okay. It's wonderful reading material. <laughs> So you so guys can. Are there actually, like, are there changes that you would want to see to this before you agree to it, or? Oh, be yeah. Before I agree to it, I'd want some changes made. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it sounded like you wanted to have more clarity on things that are kind of different subjects, but they wouldn't necessarily be part of this document, I would say. other than maybe like the um, uh, something about where you would look to find out how to enforce it. Well, I think I think you can't have a document like this if you're not going to if you're not going to enforce it in some way or you, you know, you're not going to handle the complaint. So um, and again, I'm just telling you my experience was that the board the board was the jury and the superintendent presented the evidence and it and I'm telling you, it was a very difficult case I was involved with, and then a board member that did something that was really, really wrong. So, um, the other so thing is... Like, that would have been appropriately addressed if they had followed protocol outlined on page 77 of the handbook. You're talking about what um, was read just here? Yes. Yeah, I don't think so. That wouldn't have addressed it, removing them from the board by the full board? Well, no, and, and, and part of that reason is, is because um, this happened to be a 15-member board, and there were a lot of relationships on the board, and, um, and it was, so it was really difficult. It was a real difficult situation, pre presenting the issue to the board and then having the board take a vote. Um, and it, in my opinion, it was done more with the relationships on the board than it was with the process, the, the guilt of the person that did what they did. So. so there's layers of unethical behavior is what I'm hearing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. In that case, it would be one where you would then bring it forward to the SU board and, and bring forward that all of the board members on that school board were act, acting unethically. Uh, and that then it would be up to then the full SU board to then decide if all of those people on that school board 
need to be removed or censured or whatever it needs to be. I don't know. Uh, I don't think that has any authority over the individual district boards, though, do they? I thought that that was in that page executive that board. Right. right. The executive so board it talks our about. Our board can move the situation forward. Our board can censure and move it forward to the full board, which can then vote to remove. So that takes that conflict of interest where the relationships on your individual district board could negatively come to play, sort of out of play, because we don't have the same relationship with people on FBUD or um, RSAD or, or Sharon or Strafford in my opinion. Well, I think those would all be things that you'd have to put together in a document people would have to look at and agree to or not agree to. So, And then there's one more thing here. It says, at the very last paragraph, it says, once the vote is taken, a decision has been made by the majority. In other words, um, agreeable and by by the principles outlined in the code of ethics that will do everything in my power to work as a productive mentor leadership team once the vote has been taken and the decision has been made by the majority which means that um, if you take a budget vote and you know let's say the majority of the, of the members of the board vote to support the budget and you don't then that means that you have to stand behind the board and the budget. That's, that's what that statement means. Is that right? Yes. The public record that you disagreed would be your minutes. So there would be a public record that someone disagreed. However, it's, it's still a process where we all vote. And so um, it's still your budget. It's like sometimes in political races, my candidate doesn't win but that's still my representative. No, I just, I read it. I, I don't know what I think about it, but I'm, I'm just saying that that would obligate everybody, everyone on a vote budget, no matter what it is, firing of a teacher, you know, whatever, that once it happens, and even though you might adamantly disagree with it, mm -hmm. that, if, that if you follow this, you cannot or you should not step out if somebody says, well, how did you feel about that? And you could say, I didn't agree with it. But you really couldn't say I didn't agree with it. You would, you would have to say that the board voted to do this. So therefore, you have to, you have to agree to it. You know? And I, I kind of don't like that too much. Because well, that's not true. Because we had a same situation this year in a budget that passed, and two members didn't like it. And their community members asked them at the annual meeting why they didn't support it. And they gave their reasonings. So, I mean, you can still express the reason for you turning down or not agreeing with the majority vote. And that's... Is that how you interpret that, Lisa? I think you can, you can still express your opinion. Um, however, I think the budget is still the budget. And right. I think if we get into, like... Yeah, but that's not the only, I just used the budget as an example. There's a lot of other things that happen in front of a school board where votes are right. taken, very critical votes to take in on issues that are very difficult. So, yeah. so to finish what I was saying, I think that what's really important, you can express that you disagree, but I think that what's really, at the end of the day, um, the piece that's important is that the board can say, we took a vote, this is the budget as is, you can express why you disagree. What would be unethical is then working to defeat that budget because you disagreed with the budget. So I think you can express your individual opinion, but then still at the end of the day, it's your budget, it's your board, and working across purposes um, with the board is where things get get more challenging and less ethical. Okay, that that. That's your opinion. I don't know if that's the actual, that's what everybody would agree to. But let's say you didn't and you were upset about whatever the situation was. And, and you made a statement out there in public that said you didn't agree with it. Then you just violated the code of conduct here. And that's all I'm, all I'm trying to point out is that a lot of these things 
that are that are here are judgment calls by somebody. They're a judgment call. They're not any one of us at any point in time can violate this, not thinking that you are, but you would be, in somebody else's opinion sitting there that didn't like what you said. Okay? So all I would say is when you do things like, and I'm not opposed to this, okay? I'm opposed to how some of this is written because I do believe in code of ethics, okay? Um, and I think it is important. I just would like to make sure that whoever's interpreting them understands how they're going to be interpreted. It's not up to you, me, or Andrew, or anybody else to decide what's right and what's wrong. It's not going to be that way, okay? So, a code of ethics is, it's tough stuff. It's important, but it's tough. And, and it's not everybody's going to agree. But I'm, that's why I think that if you're going to have this, put together a process that says, okay, this is how a complaint's going to be handled if there's one file. Okay, and I think we have that. I mean, this is for board members. Um, and we, so we do have that on page 77. Um, of the handbook for board members. Well, that's not law. That's not law. No, no so it's not law. And I'm, I mean... Want honestly, me to read you a law, Lisa? If you're interested in, like, a litigious process, I mean, I know we're, we're sworn to behave ethically and represent our community. Um, and I don't... Fortunately, in my time on a school board... I haven't seen board members behave in ways that were illegally, okay. that were illegal. Okay. Um, so I haven't had to delve deeply into the law, and I'm happy to reach out to our legal resources when we do. Well, um, here's, here, let me, I think let me, that this document is important because it sets forth the expectations for board member behavior. Um, and I'm concerned that we'll have now spent, um, we're going on half an hour on this issue. I was willing to pro postpone it, but I'd like to finish it. Title 16, you familiar with Title 16? Title 16 is educational law for the state of Vermont. Powers of the school board. Just something you might be interested in. A school board may also a school board may also approve or disapprove rules and regulations proposed by the principal or superintendent for conduct and management of public schools in the district. Just want you to know that. There's a lot what year, more. What year was that dated? Um, this is current. Okay. And, you know, if you go on to Vermont statutes and look up uh, powers of the school board, it's all right there. It's pretty clear. Well, I was just, the only reason I brought it was that I thought that each of the boards need to make a commitment to each other at this time. You know, not, you know, just all of you agreeing on how you're going to act, basically. And that's the only, you know, that's the only, uh, the, the only reason for this, I think, is that we all have to have a standard that we live by. And, uh, and that's, I, I don't know. There have been a lot of things that have been talked about that, that, that weren't my intent. I just think you guys need to have a, a standard to live by. Um, and I think Title 16 says that a school board may approve or disapprove rules and conduct for their school. And so in my mind, um, with the training that I've had from the School Boards Association um, annually for the last four years, uh, it, we pay a lot of money for people to write rules and unless I see things going in a direction that I find concerning I think it's not the board's role most of whom are not educators I mean on this board now 50% of us um, more than that um, if you take into account the private teaching that Lisa does um, are educators so we have more background experience, but in general, I think that board members are lay people, and so probably not well suited to be approving the exact function of a school. And I, for one, 
um, see my role as one of offering guidance, offering approval um, related to policies, et cetera. That's why I've spent so much time on the policy committee. Um, but I don't see my role as approving specific roles, uh, rules and procedures at the school level. Um, I'm not sure what Andrew, Chris, and Lisa um, have to say. They haven't weighed in very much. Yeah, I mean, I generally agree with that, that we're more setting the direction and, and philosophy and policy, and the administrators do the implementation of what we direct. And I think that's kind of different than what we were discussing in this. So, so I guess it's By the way, Tara just pointed out to me that there's an updated copy of this in the handbook. Uh, page, what is it? 41. 41. And uh, there may be some, this is an older one it's that I had that I've given out before, basically, but it's in the handbook. And we, if you're going to sign something, you might want to think about doing the most current. Okay. So. So other thoughts, Chris, Lisa? Oh, this is Lisa. I just wanted to echo what Lisa Floyd was saying. I think that um, I, I liked how you worded everything, Lisa. I think that we've all got um, some level of experience and expertise behind us, but, but I, I definitely defer to the superintendent and the administrators and I feel like as a as a parent and a school board member and a citizen of, the, of my community I'm I'm going to provide feedback but I don't expect that I'm going to be um, determining or creating policies I'm going to help help foster them but uh, we're all a volunteer board there's only so much um, we can be expected to do but it's not. It's the superintendent's role to do that. Yeah, I'm good uh, with adding some language that, you know, directs, again, the code of ethics to the page 77 of the, of the handbook. Uh, but I feel that like the rest of it is good. Um, I think we can get into lots of different what-if scenarios and things and, and play different things out, but it's it's just going to be perpetual. It's all just a matter of how we deal with something as it occurs. And, you know, I would maybe propose that for our, our board retreat in the summer, if we want to, we could have, you know, uh, you know there's videos online on, on ethics and, you know, how to interpret situations if we feel like we need any sort of board ethics training or something like that. But, uh, but I think as written, I think I'm good with, uh, with the way that things are laid out. Uh, it may be that we just need to update uh, or have some sort of operations manual that reminds us of where some of these things are at, uh, you know, because there are these different documents and it's important to remember where they are. Uh, I will update this and send it. I'll send you the updated one tomorrow. I didn't think you were going to do something tonight, but. Okay. Are we looking at the 2019? I think it is. Yeah, it's the yes. No, yeah, it's the, it's the book from 2019, the essentials of essentials yeah. work of school boards. That's the most recent board manual that VSBA has put out. Okay, because I've got that in front of me now, and I think the page on code of ethics is is, is so, great. Yeah. So the the stuff that was outlined on page 77, that's the general recommendation for how the school board deal with things. That's right? what there's that's there's, what Tara read, yeah. Right. So do we need to actually uh, like separately maybe next meeting or something like officially adopt that as our board as a policy and then that applies. You know what I mean like it like you want to no tie them both together. The rules and then we need to separate if we're going to officially accept this then separately accept something that says what do you do? When broken. I would recommend that you all read page 76. So I don't want to read it to you. <laughs> you know, I don't think, I think we should move on, and, but come up with kind of concrete next steps. Yeah. So if we don't want to 
be accepting this particular document? Like, how are we going to change it? What are we going to do differently? You know. And it sent all of chapter four seems like it addresses everything that you all have been talking about, the common board challenges. So perhaps it would be good to all read that. Maybe I need to get you the new books. I only gave them out to new board no, members. No, we all got them last year. I got them last year. I, I have mine yeah, last all right. year. When they came out, we issued them to yeah, all well, board we, members. Yeah, we gave the new board members the ones we had on hand, but we don't have any more. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. I have mine. I just didn't have time to get it between getting home from school and coming to this meeting. So. Yeah. Well, maybe can I make a proposal that we um, make sure we have the 2019 version and we review um, these pages that we've been discussing? Or, I mean, re review the manual, but more, more specifically, um, board member conduct and code of ethics. And, and, if, and then we'll all be versed and have put some thought into this and, and can talk further about this at our next board meeting. That sounds good. That sounds great. So we'll all review and um, discuss at our next meeting. Thank you. That brings us, I think, to our business manager's report. Lisa, Lisa before uh, you go there, I want to just make sure we get a chance to have Fiona uh, maybe give some insight into how the kids are feeling, her friends okay, and great. others she knows. Yeah. No, not now, but, but oh. if she's willing to do that at some point, you'll... Well, I think it might be good to hear from her at this point in time, just because um, she sat quietly for a really long time. Yeah. I'm hoping she's still there. <laughs> I'm here. All right, great. Um, am I addressing everything with the school closing? Yeah, sure. Um, I think it's kind of weird at first having to do online classes, but I think everyone is starting to understand that like we need to close and how it's important that we are. Mm -hmm. But overall, I think they're handling it well. I don't think there's any like anger or anything. But... So how has the transition been to learning from home? Well, a lot of our teachers just started posting everything today. Mm -hmm. Like today was basically the first day because yesterday we were just getting like ready and I think they were making a lot of plans. But... None of my classes have been any like FaceTime or anything. It's just been like assignments that I would have done in school. So it's not bad so far. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, that's Fiona, a, she's yeah. a student representative. She's a Hi. junior or senior. What do you miss? Oh, okay. So she's a student. Yeah. Student where, representative. Where, where, where yeah. She's at work. Um, I think school. a senior. Uh, where? I don't know. With some of my classes, White River it's hard to High make school, the assignments without, like, okay. their yeah, that's help. That's the only way like, you can math, have a student board We kind of have to district. just look at examples in the book to teach us yeah. what we're doing. But <clears throat> so if, have you talked to your friends? Um, I've talked to a couple of them. I think, I think she's, I think um, she's students back. are talking with each other, see, like, like in seniors. small groups, like I think it's a senior, right? Junior or um, senior, I don't know. We haven't really done anything like that yet, but I'm sure we will. Because I think in some classes we're going to start using, like, Google Hangout and stuff like that to just, like, have discussions. But our teachers are making themselves available for questions and everything, so. Yeah. I'm wondering, so, I this is, like, me thinking about like um, just like an educator of like <clears throat> so you all communicate prior to us being out of school yeah. are you still doing that level of communicating yeah. like like phone and texting and yeah and, yeah Snapchat. <laughs> how do you all communicate um, share with share that with us some of it's uh, secret <laughs> um well, I only talk to like a few of my friends outside of school, mm -hmm. but I mean, we don't really text about school or anything like that, but 
I'll probably start talking to more people now that I won't be seeing them for the next three months. I'm sure a lot of kids will be doing that. Three months. Three weeks. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, let's uh, let's be a little no. more optimistic than that. <laughs> what do you What do you think is so? Your opinion. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. Okay. So, um, what's what are you worried about? <laughs> I'm most worried about AP classes and getting all of the units in and learning everything you need to know before the exam. Because the exam is <coughs> which is sooner than the rest of the classes, so I'm kind of I'm a little bit worried about that. But sure. And if you could change one thing, I mean, it's only been two days. Yeah. So I think it's really important to remember that it's only been two days. Mm -hmm. If you could change one thing, what would you change? Uh -huh. And you don't need to know the answer, by the way. Yeah. I think a lot of times when students are on boards or in, in assemblies, adults put them on the spot, so don't worry about that, please. Okay. And just know this, and I know Mr. McCracken is available to you, but all of these adults are here to help you. Mm -hmm. And as a school leader, if you know of a student's need, you can reach out to any one of us and we'll try to help you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Fiona, uh, I'd like to ask a, a question. Um, okay. Is there anything that you believe we could do better? Uh, some way of providing things? I know school closed pretty abruptly yeah. and you guys you know I, I guess if you hadn't been given a little warning that maybe you should take some materials home uh that you probably would have been worse but is net hindsight's 2020 is there something that we can do um that you're lacking that we could help the student body with i guess i'm talking about the high school s uh students really uh yeah um, I think it's good that there's stuff being posted on the Facebook page and everything because it's really not anyone's fault that this happened like so fast so I think everyone's kind of like understanding that. Um, I can't think of anything because I think it's going well so far but there might be some problems in the future. Well would you urge um your fellow students to reach out to Mr. McCracken mm -hmm. or your teachers to be basically let us know what would be helpful because I know we put you in a tough spot and uh, mm -hmm. we'd like to be able to make it as as comfortable as it possibly can in a tough situation so yeah. please just talk to us okay. um, so we we know what's going on mm -hmm. okay because I don't yeah. think we can I don't think we can imagine everything uh, or anticipate everything. So, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you, Fiona. All right. Thanks for being a board member. Yeah. Um, so, Sarah, that brings us to your report. So, mine, I hope, is very short. I've been working with my staff the last two days to develop some kind of normalcy for us. Um, what we've come up with as of today, subject to change, um, Rose and I are working remotely all day long, 8 to 4, from home. I will be in the office in the evenings when needed. Um, I have to stay home with my two kiddos. Anne is working from 5 to 8 every day in the morning. Joe is coming in 8 to 12, and Jane right now is working in the office 8 to 4, and Lisa is willing to do whatever we need her to do, so we're trying to develop what will be best because we're trying to remember to keep under 10 people in the central office building also. And trying to just keep, you know, workflow going normal so bills get paid and payroll still happens because we have to pay everybody, so... We'll plug along. Okay. Do you have a current Thank you. Do you have a current budget report? 
not with me tonight, no. You want to get one for me? I send them out once a month to, board to the boards. Yep. When do you do that? Um, I usually wait for the first AP run. Did you guys hear that? So that would have Bob been last week, but with everything that happened, so probably that. next week. I'm assuming it was about budget update. Yeah, he wanted to know when I was going to do a budget report, and I said I send them out once a month, and I try to get them out after the first AP run of the month, but with everything that happened last week, it didn't happen, so it'll probably be later this week or next week. All right. And those will come to us electronically? Just the way I've been sending them, yep. Okay. Via email, the PDF, and then the awesome spreadsheet that Andrew created. Okay. Thank you. Um, do principals have anything to add? Um, we've heard a lot about the work that's been happening. Um, I was just wondering if there's anything additional for us. I'm really proud of the middle school faculty and the work they've done. I, I think Mary Ellen Simmons, the fact that she set up last Wednesday's English service as a time for us to plan for the potential to be out of school, like the foresight that she had on that, and the whole SU staff and had on that, that our faculty were able to plan for a full day last Wednesday to be able to be ready, was makes us in a much better place so just so you know, the work that the middle school faculty did, the Tarrant Institute for Innovation and Education at, and UVM have shared that information statewide, and some people have taken it out further than that. And I'm really proud of what we've done, and I'm willing, I'm happy to put that into the minutes with Tammy, and I'll, I'll send that to her. Okay. Reed, David, Andrew. Yeah, I got a couple things. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, the last couple times we've, we've been together, we've talked a lot about the open house in the spring uh, that we use to recruit folks. Uh, this week we were going to start planning that. Uh, <coughs> that's going to be on hold for now. And uh, have to think about what other ways we have for reaching out to folks. Uh, I will share that last Friday, we had two students from Chelsea who came and shadowed a student. <coughs> um, and I think they had a good experience. Uh, so you know, that's one of our recruiting tools, is doing that. Um, anybody have any questions about, about that or suggestions? One of the things that I, I picked up at the recent meeting was the idea of doing a competitive analysis. That's on my to-do list. Um, if, if maybe being able to work from home uh, allows me to get to more projects, that might be a, a plus of all of this. Uh, but there's a lot of new things to, to deal with. Uh, Reed, uh, Bob has a question or comment. Sure. Uh, um, would you just talk about your, uh, your new schedule, class schedule? Sure. Uh, our, our current schedule, Bob, is a modified block yeah. where we alternate between green days and gold days on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, the last period of the day, fourth period, uh, is meets every day for 50 minutes, Monday through Thursday. And then on Friday, there's no fourth period, but all the other classes meet. So there's six, six classes on Fridays that are 50 minutes, basically. Uh, the block classes are 80 minutes each. Uh, the new schedule that faculty, staff, and, and parents all weighed in on uh, will be a 52-minute schedule where classes meet four times a week and what might be termed a modified waterfall schedule. Um, the staff agreed unanimously on that and the feedback from the students uh, including Fiona, who was on the, a panel of students who met with the faculty, uh, was strongly in favor of shorter class periods than what we currently have. Uh, the other big change came out of uh, last April's board meeting where uh, a group of parents came to the board and asked 
uh, the administration to consider expanding the course offerings that students could take from seven courses to eight. And we have agreed to go to a eight course schedule for students. So they'll be able to squeeze in one more elective or court course at that time they choose to, to fill that time next year. How's that? I totally agree with everything you've done. Um, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out this. Eight classes, eight classes four times a week. So how does that work? You're skipping a day or what? Yeah, so each each class will skip a day. So on Monday, periods one through seven will meet. And then we drop a class on Tuesday. So it's a different seven periods. And then on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, uh, we actually only have six six classes, and to fill the extra time in the schedule, we have uh, what we've been calling learning block, like which, which 45 minutes is currently five days a week, and that will drop down to uh, three days a week. And what do you do in those blocks, B? Uh, students, you know, one, one thing people might be familiar with is the idea of callback time. Uh, it's a time where students can schedule themselves with a teacher uh, where they need extra help in a class, where they need to make up work. Uh, they can schedule themselves with a the teacher. Or we, we have a computer software program where the teachers can schedule the students to come and see them. So the students are all accounted for through attendance uh, and they need to be somewhere. Are so they in a... There's a study hall. Yeah, okay. Uh, but the idea is it's there for enrichment um, and for extra help. Good. Thank um, you. On, I, the, on the topic of scheduling, we were going to spend one of our learning blocks this week giving students an overview of all the classes. Uh, then we're going to take the next learn, two learning blocks to give them time to talk to their advisors about what makes sense for next year and then ask them to, to choose their courses for next year. Uh, we're going to push that off at least another week, uh, come up with another plan. But I think we can do that remotely. Uh, the challenge might be that we're not going to be able to answer students' questions as well as having faculty in front of them uh, to answer questions about specific courses. But, uh, All right. you know, what they sign up for now allows us to build a master schedule. They can change their choices up until the seventh day of the school year. All right. All right. Rita, are you involved with the scheduling? Are you personally involved with scheduling? You are? Yes. Do you make the decisions on how many, um, how many um, sections you have of a class? Yes. You do? You know what? What we do now, uh, Bob, is we enter all the students' choices into our uh, student management course management software, which is called Web to School, and we then give priorities to the computer, and it uses an algorithm to identify the most efficient schedule, um, where the most number of students can get the courses that they want to take. Then what we do is we come back and we got to stress test that. We take a look at a couple of students who have the most unique uh, scheduling needs. Uh, for example, we want to make sure that students to get their uh, you know, Spanish 3 class in along with chorus and band. And so we'll, we'll take two or three students from each group, look at their schedule and see where they may or may not have gotten their, their first choice of classes. And we might rearrange some schedules uh, manually to make sure that we're taking care of students' needs in a way that the computer's not sensitive to. Right. Do you, um, I'll, I'll just, in my experience, I've scheduled music and PE first. That's what we did last year. We scheduled the music classes first. Uh, and uh, if, if you had a chance to see the grant letter, you'll see that one of the outcomes of that is we have many more students enrolled in our music program this year than Good. last year. Uh, so that will continue to be a, a priority of ours. Uh, we, we also will prioritize the AP classes because they can only meet once in the schedule uh, and they naturally have low enrollment. So we don't want to have eight kids who want to take AP. Actually, we have nine kids who want to take AP uh, physics next year, I believe. 
we don't want to go out with a schedule that, that forces five of those kids to not be able to take AP physics. How many, how many students do you have 9 through 12? Uh, it, it changes every week. Uh, we've added two new students in the last three weeks. Uh, but we're running about 157 students who are enrolled in our program on a daily basis. We have another 38 students who are technically ours, uh, some of whom we see who come to the school and get transportation to their alternative program. Some of them get themselves to their programs or get picked up uh, through special transportation. So our, our total uh, number on our roll is about 197, give or take, on any given week. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Andra, David, anything? I don't have a lot. I feel like, uh, you know, what we might have said before uh, has shifted to what we are saying now. Uh, we have been full in on how to build this plane while flying it, and I think that I'm so impressed, I can't say that enough, with how well our teachers are doing at um, – meeting the academic needs of our kids in a very unexpected and new way. So um, I've been meeting daily with the Bethel Elementary staff virtually um, in Google Hangout meetings, which is nothing we've ever done before, but here we are hanging out and, um, and they're doing great. And we've been just trying to be very prepared about how to, how to take this one day at a time, one week at a time, and potentially um, for a long time. So. And um, I would add um, that we're, we're meeting virtually and using Google tools on the South Royalton campus as well. But we want to work together on both campuses as a school. And we have a virtual faculty room um, with all of the teachers in both campuses logged on, um, sharing ideas and working together. It's, it's been tremendous to see how teachers have stepped up to the plate. All right, this is Reed again. Uh, I don't know if you were able to, to kind of look into the high school section of the principal's report, uh, but in there I included a copy of the grant request letter that we sent out to donors looking to raise money uh, to fund some exploration of a music rehearsal space at the high school. Uh, we received a, a large grant from an anonymous donor that quickly met our, met our goal. It took less than two weeks to, for that to turn around. Uh, so we began talking uh, with, a, with an architect last week about how to put together a request for bids uh, or proposals. Um, we we uh, started looking at some of those, like the Springfield Library just put one out. Uh, so our committee, who knows when that will meet now, but we've got a committee that includes music boosters uh, and members of the community who are um, vested in what happens with the the stage atorium or um, whatever you want to call it. Um, the idea would be uh, creating some extra storage space for uh, the music program and the theater program and uh, giving ourselves more space so that high school students would be able to practice. Uh, right now we sometimes have high school students practicing their instruments out in the hallway. Uh, and uh, it, it gets a little bit loud at times. So there, there definitely is room for the more appropriate uh, and higher quality space for our burgeoning program. Uh, the, the concept of the committee that's been working on this is that we would seek private uh, foundation money, private donors to fund this. So um, that, that's where this is headed. We have a track field. Yeah, this Do you have any questions about that? So are you are you expanding the the stage area? Is that what you're talking about, Reed? Uh, or a, a new auditorium, or what are you talking about? Yeah, in in the letter that's linked into the principal's report, uh, on the second page, there's a list of items that we're including as what we'd like to find funding for. Uh, that includes upgrades upgrades to the stage. The the stage itself wouldn't change. Uh, but it would include set and prop storage, uh, installation and purchase of sound and lighting equipment. Um, we had a, a, 
uh, moved development last week. I, I signed a contract with a, a theater in Woodstock that is loaning us their lighting equipment, about $5,000 worth of lights and rigging. Uh, and those are on permanent loan with us. Uh, the only stipulation is that we uh, loan it back to them upon their request and that we maintain the equipment uh, with with uh, working lights and keep it operational for us. Uh, so we won't need to go out and spend much money on lighting equipment. Uh, it's included in, in the specs for this are a, a grand piano uh, and uh, possibly some types of collapsible tiered audience seating that would create more of a stage effect in the gym as opposed to uh, you know, just have a folding chairs on the gym floor. Where does the where does the band and the chorus where do they where's their classroom now? Is it on the stage or downstairs? The, no, the elementary and, and high oh, school downstairs. teachers share a classroom in the basement. Okay. And then occasionally because our schedule is different than the elementary schedule, whenever the schedule changes because we have a two hour delay or a half day. Uh, it creates the need to juggle elementary and high school classes around because they're kind of competing for the same space. Does that make sense? Uh, the, the other thing that uh, is a space thing we're looking at at the high school is, uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk, or there's been mention frequently this past year of uh, some sort of alternative placement, how nice that would be. Uh, for us to have as a resource for high school students. We have a couple of high school students right now who we think would, would benefit greatly. Uh, they can be like six to eight students, maybe. Um, and we don't have a lot of options for them. So uh, one of the things that was going to happen uh, this week was uh, having everybody who might have a stake in that sit down and start to talk about what that looks like. Uh, in an ideal world, we locate a classroom that we can uh, use as a home base for the whole day. Um, we, we might end up sharing a classroom, uh, but that's part of exploring what that might look like. Uh, I think we have that the staff, uh, as you know, I've, I've mentioned having uh, more staffing capacity than I think we, we need. Uh, I think we can uh, reallocate some of our, our staff to, to work in a smaller personalized setting uh, that may be more project-based learning or more one-to-one -one based, kind of using the East Valley Academy as a model. Uh, they, they provide pretty extensive psychological and counseling services for the family and students. And that's well beyond what, what I envision here, but for students who might not need all those services, uh, we might be able to provide something. We, you know, we, we've got a number of students who, who, for one reason or another, experience real anxiety when they're a classroom with 20 other students. Um, and it, you know, some of it has to do with stuff that happened back in fifth grade or seventh grade and some experience has, has triggered them and uh, it continues to haunt them. Um, and so if we can provide some, some alternative setting um, it gives them more flexibility, um, that's what we're looking to do. Um, do, you have a, the, do you have a uh, school psychologist that's regular education? We do not. That's the perfect segue into this. Uh, we, we do not have a licensed clinician uh, or social worker to work with our students. Uh, and it's been a challenge this year because many of the students who most would benefit from that, uh, their parents work 12 hours a day or uh, don't have transportation of their own. So getting them to a psychologist <laughs> is problematic for some of these students. Uh, so we've, we've been talking with private clinicians about whether they would spend part of their time with the students. And we, we just initiated a relationship uh, where we have a, a licensed counselor working with two students. <coughs> but we are in talks with Clara Martin Center to look at uh, what it would take to uh, have them hire an in-school or school-based clinician that would be under their supervision that they would pay for the majority of. Uh, if we could provide <laughs> eight students who are on Medicaid as part of that person's caseload, they'll pay 60% of the contract for that person. That would leave us uh, 
with the need to find about $20,000 to pay for the other 40% of their salary. Uh, and I think we can do mm -hmm. that and squeeze that money out of our 504 budget line uh, and, and hopefully save money from our 504 budget line because that's, you know, right now that uh, fund we use to pay for students to go somewhere else for their educational mm -hmm. services. To the left, we have to use that <coughs> we need to bring in an outside counselor to work with someone. Um, you know, the more cost effective that would be. And what he's asking is if we can uh, pursue this. Uh, that it's important that we try to put this together and he's asking the board for permission to pursue this. What do you think? You want to wait and think about it for next meeting? What do you want? What do you think? I, mean, I think it's a fabulous idea. Um, I'm struggling to agree to it um, without really knowing um, where we're at with the budget this year right now and knowing um, what things will look like. That's that's my inclination. I feel like if we have more of a handle at this moment on the budget piece, um, I would feel really comfortable jumping in because I believe we need this. Um, and I believe it's something that we need to do. Um, it's just where we find the money um, yeah, I agree. Do you think it would be possible to put together something for next meeting where you might show like how many outside budgets we <laughs> used and how much money went to that and how much we might keep in house? You know, like if, if you could show us that's going to be budget neutral, it's going to be a no brainer. Right. So I think if, if you could provide some statistics on what our current usage is and how it might change with this new position, then that would help make the decision. Great suggestion. Reed, my personal experience with uh, Claire Martin was that you get a person and they're assigned to your school, but then they have an overload of parents, of patients, or whatever. They bring that they bring that person back into the Claire Martin Center to work with clients that they have. So I I don't know how the grant will be written. I don't know. Um, what they're willing to, if it's a full-time position for you, or they're going to call that person out to do things for them. And uh, in my experience, um, I lost that person probably at least a third of the time. We, we do have uh, some experience with Claire Martin and providing this. We do have two people right now, one at um, Chelsea and one at Tunbridge that we're working. We do have their contract. It's been in front of our lawyer to make sure it's favorable mm -hmm. uh, to us. So we do have, uh, you know, a potential contract that we would sign uh, as a model for, for what we're asking here. And that's a very, very recent thing. I mean, within the last three months. Mm -hmm. So does it land that student in, the, does it land that person in the school full time? I don't have anything to do with the contracts. Does, how about Chelsea? Do they keep them in the school full time? I don't have any idea on the contracts. I don't do them. That's Bruce and the lawyer. I just know they're in there now. Thank you, Reed. You're welcome. Yeah, I like your schedule. It's really good. Well done. Thanks.